Let's make some gill. I decided to see if I could go from one gill to one million gill in one day in the middle of the 6.0 patch without crafting anything because the markets are, you know, duty. You don't actually need gill in Final Fantasy, but come on, you know you want it. Fancy cars and supermodels, mansions and beachfront properties, fancy clothes and catgirl nightclubs. Gil is the high score tracker of Final Fantasy and you know you want to put your name at the top. I started with setting timed nodes on FFXIV team craft for botanist and minor items worth over 500 gil apiece. Things like dark steel ore will always be relevant because FCs use it for airships and submarines, especially once 6.1 drops and there are all of a sudden way more FCs with housing. Depending on your server and RNGs, some of the crafting materials for the level 90 stuff might be worth 800 or 1000 gil, so I set a timer for a couple of those. After grabbing a superior spirit bond potion, I also turned on my FC spirit bond buff to help out with getting materia. You can also use the Squadron's Spirit Bond manual, but they don't stack. There's nothing that I'm doing here that are exactly big ticket items, but doing things like going out and gathering once an hour for 30k starts to add up. I was doing things like checking my retainer every hour that I'm online, and I racked up over 50,000 gil in just four hours of playing. All I did was send out two retainers, one for fire shards and the other one for Opio Teros hides? Old potato hides. Ohio Tater Fries? Ohio Taurus Hides. We'll go with that. But you're going to have to check your market board for which material is selling best. Retainers will bring back more items per hour the higher eye level they are. Battle retainers and gathering retainers are a little bit different, but you're trying to get to item level 570. That way they'll bring back 15 of any of the items that you send them to get every hour. I did this by using three pieces of artifact gear from the vendor and old Charland. But if you happen to be using this still or need to set up multiple battle retainers, first equip your retainer with it and then you can go back to the vendor and purchase it again and give it to the next retainer. After those three pieces, you have to fill out the rest of the slots with the crafted gear. Battle retainers only care about the eye level. They don't care about stats. So don't worry about optimizing gear or even high quality. For gathering retainers, you have to have a high enough gathering stat to even send them out to get a certain item. But to increase the amount they'll bring back, you have to increase the perception that they have. It can start to get expensive because you have to start melding materia to get them to reach the cap, but it can be worth it if you do take the time to do it. Next I hopped on my level 90 job and started queuing up for roulettes. Yep, I did all my roulettes as a capped out level 90. You get different rewards if you're on a max level rather than leveling up a job. Plus you'll get gil put right into your pocket. Make sure you're rolling need and greed on all of those items. We're going to use them later. There's no loot etiquette in Final Fantasy, so unless someone speaks up and wants a certain item, we technically need that item. We just need it to make gil rather than wear it. I personally will pass on everything if I see a sprout in my party, but if they start passing on things, it's open season and I'm going loot hunting. You can further your rewards from roulettes if you have a roll in need and get the bonus items. Joining in on unsynced mount farm runs can also be a really good source of extra gear too if you're in a real need of some grand company seals since most people are just there for the mount drop. I also turned in Allegan pieces to the weekly Doman Enclave. The donation box can get you up to 20,000 gil every week for just turning in items. The Doman Enclave is a side story that takes place during Stormblood. It's locked behind weekly turn-ins and you play your part restoring a war-torn country. The entire city transforms as you help them make money and get re-established. You can get Allegan pieces off of the market board and trade them in. You'll get double back what they're worth. Now that I actually had enough gil to teleport, I went and got a map. Check the prices of each expansion's map before you choose which one you're going to gather because the prices can vary pretty wildly. Maps randomly spawn while gathering at a level 60, 70, 80, or 90 node. Sometimes it'll be the single player map and sometimes it'll be the eight player map. You don't have to gather the first one you see or even have to gather anything from that node. If the one you want didn't pop, just move on to the next spot again and again until it does pop and then gather it. I like to collect crystals from my apartment and my house and my FC room. I even grow crystals at a friend's house. And don't tell my FC I hide crystals under the stairs. 
pick up flower pots and soil in the residential districts and grab deluxe garden patches if you happen to have a house. The Riviera, Glade, and Oasis flower pots are all the same. Just pick up whichever one you like the look of best. Place your flower pot down in the room, click it, and add the soil and seeds. That's all there is to it. You don't need to check on it or do anything else for 18 hours. I was also online when my hunt link shell called out an A-rank train. These can definitely be the best way to get tombstones in a short period of time, and showing up to S-ranks are worth a ton of materia and tombstones. After buying up all the accessories I could with the Poetics from Roulettes, I turned in all that gear to my grand company and I bought Glamour Prisms to sell on the market board. You could sell anything listed here, really. I just went with what I thought would sell the fastest. And since I did my roulettes at cap, I have a ton of aphorism tomes too. I'm just gonna buy whatever crafting material is selling for the highest amount at the moment. Go to the Tombstone Exchange NPC in Razatan and to the Others tab anytime they add a new crafted piece of gear. The prices for these items will skyrocket and they'll add new items every patch or every other patch, I forget. Whatever cracked clusters I picked up doing roulettes and hunt trains, I traded them in for the highest materia I could that was selling on the market board. I checked the market board price for the level 80 to 90 stuff for miner and botanist materials. My general rule of thumb is about 500 gil per item and selling quickly. If it's over 500, it's probably worth it. Check the price history. Just don't blindly list stacks of 99 the whole time. Check and see if maybe you would sell them easier in stacks of 50. I also pulled some old tricks out of the bag once I had a little bit of spare money. You can resell a lot of the items from NPCs that are in Limsa. You can pick up the weathered accessories from this NPC for only 168 gil. Then I relisted them for 15,000 and 30,000 gil. The key here is to diversify. It won't do you any good to list 10 of them, so don't be that person. Don't ask me why, but the oldest trick in the book for making gill still works. Killing sheep for Felice and Corthus just outside of Dragon's Head. It's probably just because it's a low level weaver craft and all the new crafters haven't heard of the firmament yet. They'll respawn quickly and they drop up to nine fleece at a time. It should only take about 15 minutes for you to get a stack of 99, so you can decide if it's worth it or not. Okay, so I know I said earlier I wanted to do this without crafting because the market board is really bad at the moment, but I also avoided the market board altogether by just doing leaves in Old Charland. I did this as an alchemist, but there are really a few jobs that have easy to get materials that have a good payout. Make sure you have your spirit buff on while doing this so you can sell some materia after you're done with your leaves. There are a few guides out there that cover it more in depth, but here's the macro that I used. Again, I used the FFXIV team craft for the macro here. You can use this site to help create macros or even find pre-made macros from other users. I'll leave a link down below. So how much did I end up making? Without the leaves, I ended up hitting about 630,000 gil. But I think the real way to make money here is by doing your daily allowance of leaves. If you still need to level up your crafters, it's much faster than you think it is. Check out one of these videos.